Well, thank you guys so much. Right, well, my name is Quinton, and I'm here today to talk to you about my leadership plan. So I was in the first phase, and I walked into that entire section thinking, what am I doing? So I went into it beforehand thinking, what am I doing? I am an escape master at an escape room place called Codebreakers. And then I was at phase one, and I was so inspired by you beautiful people around me. Every single one of you are doing amazing things in the industry. And I was like, well, what am I doing? Right, what am I doing? So then I got into phase two, I was trying to figure this out, and still, I'm still asking the question, what am I doing? But, now I'm thinking with a bit more enthusiasm, a bit more excitement, the first thing I had to do was figure out my vision, okay? And for me, this is really fuzzy. I was struggling, I've never had a vision personally for myself, and the first thing I had to think was, what, what does vision mean? Well, to me, a vision means my sight, what can I see? Well, I figured that, hey, a vision can be a target, something that I can always see out there in the future. Whatever decisions I make around here in day-to-day -day life, I'll always have that there in the horizon. It's not always here in the forefront, but it will be there. So I realized that a big thing that vision can provide is clarity. It can now give me a goal. It's something that I'm always moving towards. So you guys might be wondering, what is my vision? My vision is a, a cheeky little snap line that is to inspire and uplift with passions. Now, passions is a, is a weird word. Normally, we don't put the S there, but I have underlined it, and that's for a reason. Because to me, that S was actually a crucial part of my journey. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dive a bit deep into passions here today with you guys. So what is passion? All well, people describe it as the stomach chakra. It's the thing that gets you pumping. It's your go-go juice. And you might notice I've got a bit of that. I get really excited about stuff that maybe normal people don't find exciting. But I'm, I'm a passionate person, and I've got a lot of fire. And this right here is horticulture. This has been my number one passion for the last seven years. But for the last year, I felt like I was cheating on it. I'm doing stuff that makes me happy, but I'm not working towards this anymore. And I felt a little bit empty, a little bit, a little bit sad. But coming out of, phase, out of phase one and working in phase two, I realized, well, maybe it's okay to have more than one passion. And then this guy turned up. We've all talked about him already today. His name is Self Doubt. And he turned his fire hose onto my fire and made me feel a little bit sad. He started telling me things such as, well, you can't even focus on horticulture. Why would you start branching out into all these other things? And your passions aren't even that cool, bro. He really cut me deep. So what did I do? I used the tools from our first phase. And one of the big things that we all looked at was our support network, our family, our friends, our support, right? So I did something outrageous. When I was having a hard time, I reached out to the people that, that, I, you know, that I find inspiring. I spoke to Ian during our, our, our phone calls. I, I had a good chat with friends, and I, I reached out to my wife a lot. I chewed her ear off a whole lot. And my family, my friends, my support system, they came out in force, and they told this guy, just get out of here, man. This is a controlled burn. He has a permit for that fire. You don't need to be here. You're, you're needed elsewhere, man. So he left, and hey, look, look what happened. I got really excited because now I could explore my passions for several things. I want to jump into those now. And these passions right here, these four passions that I'll touch on today, there's many others, but this is how I achieve my first goal. That is to make an impact. I not only want to know that I'm making an impact, I want to feel that I am making an impact to my local and wider community in a positive way. So where do I start? Well, I love people. And so I realized, well, what can I do every single day? I can treat every interaction like it's a genuine important one. I want to ask you guys, how many times you walked into a supermarket, you're feeling great, the person at the checkout is visibly not. They're kind of, mm, you're like, hey, how's your day? All right, yours? Yeah, yeah all good. And you scan your club card and you get your groceries. Have a good day. Oh, it was a friendly interaction, but did it mean anything? I often find that if I see someone having a hard day, I almost turn down my fire. Because I don't want to, I guess I feel worried that I'm going to burn them with my excitement because they're not having a great day. But the more I started putting this in the forefront of my mind, the more I started realizing I could actually be that on switch for that person that day. I could take someone who was maybe having a mediocre time and get them excited with a genuine, hey, how's your day going? Treating them like I know them, like they're already a friend. And the next thing you know, the people I interact with every day, complete strangers than supermarket, they're smiling when I walk in and I'm smiling because I see them. And I get to talk to them about, hey, you know, last week was a bit rough. How's it going this time? So I've found that that is something I can do right now, right here, to make an impact with the people around me. Something I can do with my wider community, because I'm not currently working in horticulture, is using social media. This is an example of a YouTube video I uploaded recently from content that my wife filmed of me when I was working in kiwifruit. 
how to take leaders in kiwi fruit, working in a gold kiwi fruit orchard. The goal here isn't to become viral. I'm not trying to get a million views, right? But it's great because I can measure, I can see how many people have watched this, how many people liked it, how many comments did they get? Did they actually maybe feel inspired by this? If I can get one individual who has never worked in kiwi fruit who's considering it to say, oh, well, that actually was kind of fun. That looks, I like that process. And they get involved. And I've made an impact, and I'm ticking that box, and it makes me feel really good. You guys see that gadget right there? Well, that's the Warthog V Sharp Knife Sharpener. You can get yours today while one fifty nine ninety nine. <laughs> Just kidding. But we do sell this product as a family business, and it's, I've been involved in it for the last six years. I've travelled over and seen every single hunting and fishing store in New Zealand, which is where we sell it mainly. And I'm getting really passionate and excited about the fact that now I can be more involved in it. During phase one, I was driving home every day, running the business while my parents were overseas, and I realized, oh, I actually really love this. So I stepped into a marketing manager role for the family company, and we're expanding this into Australia in 2023. So that's going to be me and the wife back in a van, traveling with our stock, and getting this on the, on the Australian market, which to me is super exciting. I could set myself up for life with this one opportunity. Another thing that you guys might notice I get excited about is presenting. I actually really enjoy it. And so I found myself in a beautiful position where I'm an MC at a ping pong club called Serve. <laughs> Sounds insane, right? But can you imagine? You've got 70 complete strangers walking into your business. Some of them don't want to be there. This is a work do. And they have to do what? Play a ping pong tournament for the next two hours? Right. Well, it's my job to get them excited about that ping pong tournament, to get them involved, to get them engaged, to make sure they're having fun. And I've realized that hey, this isn't exactly on my horticultural career pathway, but this can serve me. It's an extrovert's dream. I am literally taking this opportunity and running with it. So that's, that's where I am trying to make an impact with my passions. That is my first goal, make an impact. Something else that I really, really felt passionate about coming out of phase one, and I know many of us did, was to, to feel healthy. So my second goal was to build a rhythm of physical and mental exercise. And I walked out of phase one, I don't know about you guys, I looked at that guy, Renee Kappa, doing 75 hard during our course, and I was like, man, I'm going to work out every single day of the week. And then I got home in five days and I realized one important detail. I'm not Renee Kappa. I am not that guy. I simply am not. And hey, that is where I would love to be with his level of dedication, his motivation to work out every single day. So I started learning a little bit, looking into how can, I, how can I do this and do it well, do it sustainably. I found this guy. I don't know if you guys have heard of Jordan Peterson, but he's got some interesting talks out there. One of the things I learned from this man is that incremental improvement is still improvement. Just because I'm not working out seven days a week, just because I'm not Renee Kappa, doesn't mean that I can't feel good about my progress. So I started just one day a week, just one day a week, go for either a run or have a workout, one day a week, make sure you're doing a meditation or a yoga session, just one day. And I did that for five weeks, and it worked. I did it, and I felt great. I've got an attainable target, and I felt good about actually doing something. It was better than the zero I was on earlier. And then it moves to two days a week. And so in another, in another, another three weeks, I'll be going to three days a week. And that way, I'm getting my incremental improvement. So people like, Rob, um, like Jordan Peterson have you know, helped me get inspired, just like all of you, just like Renee Kappa. Another person who got me inspired, you may remember, in phase one, I was picking apples on Emily's kiwi fruit on, on an apple orchard, right? And then I was picking apples for Regan. Well, the one day I was thinking to myself, well, what would Regan say if I was just happy to be a labourer? Which is what I was doing, just picking kiwi fruit at the start of the season. Well, I figured he'd probably look over his shoulder and ask me, are you getting complacent over there, mate? And damn, I was. Busted. Absolutely busted. I was here preaching to the entire group about complacency, right? Hey, we can't be complacent. We need to keep moving. We need to keep growing. But was I doing that? Well, I had to sort of reflect. I had to look inwards. And no, I actually wasn't. So that brought me to my next goal, my final goal. Don't stop growing. I realized that I had. I wonder if, if anyone else does this, but coming from horticulture, I sometimes walk into a Bunnings. And I'm going there to buy some plants, whether it's for my home or for, for work, you know, if I'm doing a garden for them. And the woman in Bunnings will be like, oh, hey, like, can, I, can I give you some assistance? And I'm like, oh, no, I'm good, thing. You know, As if they're not going to be able to teach me something new. You know? or, or I'm buying some fertilizer, and old mate comes over, he's like, oh, well, do you know that the pH of your soil can? I'm like, yes, please, come on, man. I know this, right? Well, actually, I don't know as much as I think I do. So I've decided to start growing, and I'm going to keep on going with this. 
So something huge, and they're talking about their incremental improvement. I started taking the things in my everyday life. So for example, my free time. Every day I probably spend maybe 30 minutes on sort of watching a, in, an entertaining YouTube video or playing some games with friends, and that's good. That's, that's a bit of my me time. But I decided if I'm going to take 30 minutes of this entertainment time, let me break it up a little. Let me do 15 minutes of watching, let's say, a funny YouTube video. Then let's take another 15 for an educational one, an inspirational one. One about horticulture, one about leadership, one about vision, one about exercise. One like Jordan Peterson's. And it's actually been phenomenal, just by everyday little things, trying to make the time for this growth. And the other thing I've been finding really helpful is the weekly readings. So I've been subscribed to Research Gate for the longest time. And I've been getting the emails every week about the new thing that was published. And I've probably opened it like three or four times in the last six years, let's be honest. But now I've started making more of a point. I need to get more involved, see what's happening in the industry. And I got some amazing recommendations from Alex just now as well. Some of the podcasts she listens to, some of the websites she visits. I've noted those down because those are important. But the reason why I've underlined journaling right there is because none of this, to me, really has as much of an impact if I'm not writing it down. If I'm reading the stuff and I'm not able to at least have a summary or a key takeaway, am I really doing it? If I'm having an impact on someone today, having a great conversation with a stranger, did it really happen if I can't remember their name? If I can't remember what we talked about and what happened? Or if I can't, then how would they? Was it really that impactful? So I've started taking note that this journaling is extremely important. And I've been really inspired by my flatmate. He is a bodybuilder, exercises every single day, wakes up at 4 a.m., goes to the gym, comes home, gets his meal ready for the next day, goes to bed by seven o'clock, for an hour of journaling. And that's how he's helped his mental health. He has come in leaps and bounds in recent years. And it's because he'll just sit down and write anything that bad happened today, anything that good happened today. And that, to him, was the most important thing in his daily routine. So I've taken a leaf out of his book. Like several of you, I've started trying to do this actively. So, going from what am I doing, this is what I am doing. And I'm really excited to be able to share it with you all today, because. I feel like I'm finally understanding what is next for me. And something else that's actually in that realm of keep going, I've also en enrolled in a postgraduate diploma at Lincoln, um, doing po uh, postgrad dip in horticulture. I was initially going to be doing viticulture because I decided I want to work into that pathway. I'm going to be working in that, that avenue. And knowing that I'm going to Australia next year to be marketing the family business, I know that I need to have that time and it's a distance payment, so a postgrad dip works for me at this time. And um, I also know that in the future I'm going to be relocating to California. So a huge industry in California, viticulture, huge industry here, viticulture. And if I ever get the chance to return back to the home in South Africa, well hey, Viticulture is always a booming industry there too, as well as everywhere else in the world. I might be in Europe in five, ten years' time, who knows? But I feel good about the fact that I'm at least continuing on this journey, not feeling stagnant, not getting complacent, always growing. So that is what I am doing. Thanks so much, guys. Time for questions, if you have any. That was quite quick, wasn't it? I felt like every time I uh, practiced this at home, I, I went 17 minutes, so... 1844? Yeah. Excellent. Questions? Do you want me to kill a bit? Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, appreciate it.